the slide from the current slide. Now, here's the announcement I wanted to make to you. I don't really understand totally why we're doing this, but they sent this around for us to announce, so let me tell you. If it helps you, then it's worth it. Uh, there's a company, I'm pretty sure this is a private company, whose name is STEM Jobs. Okay, uh, of course you know what STEM is, right? Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics is the area that all of you are in, okay? Uh, but this company has released a new tool to connect classrooms to careers. Uh, and it's out of Pittsburgh, Tennessee. I mean, Pittsburgh. There is a Pittsburgh, Tennessee. But it's, I'm pretty sure it's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, in an effort to connect students to opportunities from post-secondary institutions, employers, and the military, STEM Jobs has launched the STEM Type Navigator. Navigator asks students about skills they like to use now in order to connect them with careers that use those same skill clusters uh, according to the ODET code from the Department of Labor. Uh, so if you want to read this, I'm not going to read it all to you, but it's here, okay? And you're certainly welcome to check into it if you would like, okay? I'm talking about a new device, a uh, tool to connect students to possible careers. And this is STEM related, all STEM related, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So uh, if you want to see it, you're certainly welcome to pick it up and see it. And I'll tell you it's here. Okay. <clears throat> That being said, let's get back to linear algebra. Okay. Let me first get my pen set up. Okay. Now, we're in chapter 2, which is matrices, 2.3, the inverse of a matrix. And uh, theorem 210, I think we got through example 7 last time. Uh, and theorem 210, uh, let, let me back off and read the paragraph right before this. By the way, do all of you have books now, or ebook or something? You do. Is that right? Okay, good. So I won't have to write all this down. Well, I can't remember if everybody in the class has this. Okay. One important property in the algebra of real numbers is the cancellation property. Okay. For instance, if you knew that AC was equal to BC, and you knew there were common factors here, you can cancel out the C's and, re and determine that A is equal to B. Okay. Now, we saw in the past that if matrix A multiplied by matrix C is equal to matrix A, I'm sorry, B multiplied by Got to keep my letters the same. Uh, matrix B multiplied by matrix C. That does not necessarily mean that A is equal to B. You can't just go out canceling the matrix in general, right? We saw that. We showed that. We proved that before. Works with numbers doesn't always work with matrices. However, if that matrix C was invertible, you can have the same ca uh, cancellation properties. So here's what the theorem says. If C is invertible, now what does it mean to be invertible? Okay, not one over that. That's in, in numbers we do that. In matrices, that means the invert. Now, if you're thinking the determinant, one over the determinant on a two by two, that, that is what we mean there. But this is any size uh, matrix. If C is invertible, it means it has an inverse. In other words, if you uh, took C, did row reduction with the same, oh, and by the way, C would have to be what characteristic of C? Square. square. C has to be square to be invertible. Just because it's square doesn't mean it's invertible, but it can't be invertible if it's not square. 
Okay, so C has to be square, and if you multiplied it by the uh, adjoined it with the um, identity matrix of the same size, and then did row reduction, you will wind up with a matrix without all zeros at the bottom. Okay? And you'll wind up with something like six. So C has to be invertible. If C is an invertible matrix, then these properties hold. Number one, if again AC is equal to BC, then now we can conclude, if C is invertible, we can conclude that A is equal to B. You couldn't in general, but if C is invertible, you can. Okay? And the other way, that if CA is equal to CB and C is invertible, then this concludes that Again, A is equal to B. Okay? That only works if C is invertible. Okay. Now, of course, A's and B's have to be the right sizes. Do the A and B's have to be square matrices? No. C has to be a square matrix to be invertible. But A and C, A and B don't have to be. Now, of course, they have to be the same size. But give me a size for C. What size do you want it to be? Two by two? Oh, he likes it two by three. Two by three. Then A could be anything by two, right? Okay. Seven by two, one by two, fifteen by two, but it would have to be something by two. So of course, B would have to be the same size. Down here, what would, if C was a two by two, what would A have to be? Two by something, exactly. Two by seven, two by forty-five, you know, anything. Two by one. But A and B would have to be those, be those sizes, okay? So they would have to be the same size. Uh, and they certainly would have to be the same size for them to be equal. So that would be true. So if that multiplier matrix is an invertible matrix, then you can cancel. If it's not, don't even try it, okay? Now, Here's how we're going to prove. We said in general that's not going to be the case, but again, these are pretty fun little proofs, okay? This is what we're given, okay? That, given two facts, okay? First fact, C is invertible. Second fact, AC is equal to BC, okay? Can we, beyond the shadow of doubt, say that A is equal to B? Yeah, and here's why. So C is invertible, you can multiply C on the left, on, on the right, by its inverse, right? But if you do it there, you have to do it here too, right? Because C is invertible. And what is the product of C with its inverse? Pretty easy. Say again? Did you say one? If you were talking in matrix speak, what would you say? I. I, that's it. This is A times I, and C times C inverse would be I again, so it would be B times I. But what's A times I? A. And what's B times I? B. So sure enough, you just proved they have to be true. If C is invertible and uh, AC is equal to BC. That means it has to be true that A is equal to B. All right. Now, let's get back to systems of equations. Why are we doing all this about invertible matrices anyway? Now, <clears throat> here's the requirement. For a square systems of equations, what do we mean by that? Same number of variables as you have equations. Same number of equations as you have unknowns. That makes a square uh, coefficient matrix. Seven equations, seven unknowns. Three equations, three unknowns. Five equations, five unknowns. 
that makes a square coefficient matrix. Now, if you include the uh, adjoin that to the uh, solution matrix, then it's no longer square, but all you're concerned with is coefficient matrix. In fact, that's really all we're concerned with now. So for square systems, those having the same number of equations as variables, you can use the following theorem to determine whether the system has a unique solution. Okay? So, we're going to start with our good old friend A and say it's an invertible matrix. What does that mean? One thing, how does it look? Square. Got to be square to be invertible. Okay? Got to be. Now, just because it's square doesn't mean it's invertible, but it's got to be square if it is invertible. Uh, and the thing is, and the, the other is, obviously, it has an inverse. Okay? So, if A is an invertible matrix, then this include, concludes that the system of linear equations A, X, equal B. If A is invertible, then that system of equation, AX equal B, and here's Travis. All right, top part of the alphabet is doing quite well. Bottom part just has one person here, so glad you're here. But Okay, we're in chapter 2, matrices, section 2.3, um, inverse of a matrix, and we're at the top of page 70, uh, looking at theorem 211. Okay, so if A is invertible and you have a system of equations you can represent by A being the coefficient matrix times the column matrix B, which will be if A is an n by n, X would have to be a n by 1, right? Column matrix, same number of equations of variables as you have equations, okay? So that would be an n by 1. And that's equal to B, which is another column matrix, which happens also to have to be n by 1. You know, in general, that's not true if you had different numbers of equations from unknown. But A has to be squared to be invertible, so that now they're the same. Okay? Then this has a unique solution. Okay, in other words, you're going to have A one and only one solution. In other words, you're not going to have any T's and S's, so you have an infinite number of solutions. Remember when you had those as parameters? When you wound up with a row of zeros at the end or, or a column that didn't have a leading, a leading one in it, then you had a dependent system. But if A is invertible, uh, AX equal B, you're going guaranteed to have a unique solution, okay? Uh, and here's how you get it. The solution is going to be what your x's are. And here's what you do, okay? If a is invertible, it has an inverse, right? So let's take that inverse, a inverse, multiply it by a, x. But if we multiply that, multiply a inverse by b. Okay, what does this give you? A inverse times A? I times X is equal to A inverse. Ah. My pen is writing slowly and I put my, started to put my minus sign in the wrong place because I couldn't see where my letter was. B. Okay, so in other words, that's just one. Okay. X is that. Now, how were we solving these before? Row reduction. Okay. Either Gauss method or Gauss Jordan method. Here you have another method. Write that. You don't have to do an adjoint matrix or anything else. You can just take that uh, matrix A and find its inverse. And then take that inverse and multiply it on the left by your constants at the end, and you're going to get your x values. You know what? That's longer and harder than 
Gauss or Gauss Shorten method. So why would we do it? Well, no particular reason to do it, except this is quite programmable. They already have packages that can give you the inverse of a matrix. So if you have the inverse of a matrix, they have packages that will multiply that matrix, the inverse matrix, by a column vector. So, hey, you can do it this way, making the computer do the work faster than you could you having to do a reduction. Now, you can kind of program row reduction, but it's not nearly as easy to program as the inverse. That's already been done. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's do example eight. Use the in, an inverse matrix to solve each system, okay? System A, 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to negative 1. 3x plus 3y plus z is equal to 1. 2x plus 4y plus z is equal to negative 2. Okay. Now, they said use an inverse matrix to solve that. And I want to do a big boo hiss, okay, because it's easier to do it gauss jordan or Gauss or Elimination. You know. But they said do it, so let's do it. So what do we do? Okay, and what would it be? Two, Two three, three one. Uh-uh. We're not doing that kind of elimination. We're not doing gauss shorten. We just do the inverse. So what follows that then? Um, one. one. More. Zero, zero. Yeah, we're doing the... Augment that with the identity matrix. So next. Three. 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 One. Eh? Zero. zero, one, zero. Okay, and two, two four, four, one, zero, zero, one. Very good. Now, what's the first thing we want to happen? I think this may be the very first matrix that is already done for us. What's that? Uh, one in the upper left, and there ain't no way to get that to happen, is there? Okay? Uh, so, another big boo is. So, what might be a way to get, make it happen? Force its hand. What would you do? Which one? Top one? You certainly could. You could, certainly could. That would give you three fractions, okay? Or you could divide this by three and give you two fractions, okay? Or you could divide this by two and give you two fractions. Now, I just have a preference for halves to thirds because I could write halves as decimal numbers where I can't write a third as a decimal number. It's one, two, three, 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 I'm a little more in favor of switching these two rows than then do it. Okay? You okay with it? All right. Now, I'm going to cheat a bit, and what I'm going to say is one half row three becomes the new row one. Okay? And row one becomes the new row three. Okay? So I'm going to do it all at once. Is that okay? 
So that's going to come up here to do it, I think. Okay? So our new row 1 is going to be 1, 2. Okay? If you prefer fractions, you can write it as 1 half. 0, 0, 1 half. Okay, not too bad. And new row 2, let's leave it alone. Or you can move them all down. It doesn't matter which way you go, but let's just keep it simple and do 3, 3, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay? And the new row 3 will be 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. The old row 1. Okay. Everybody got it? See how we did it. Okay. Now, what next? You want 0 underneath that leading 1. You certainly do. How will we make that happen? Help me, help me. How do we do that? You want that to become a zero. How do we make that happen? Help me, somebody. I'm dying up here. Okay, three, negative three times row one. I'm going to write it this way. Row two minus three row one. That way I don't lead off with a minus sign, okay? So, let's do that. Since we're using row 1, write it down. 1, 2, 1 half, 0, 0, 1. Okay? And give me the new row 2. Second. It is a one half. I don't know why it didn't write as one half. I told it to, but never mind. Okay. Next. Thanks. What's our new row two? Zero. I got that one. Did I hear a minus? Uh, it's negative three. Negative three. Perfect. Next. Negative one half. Okay, everybody agree? Next. Oh, I'll almost do that one. Zero. Zero. Oh, you took it from me. Okay. I could do the next one too. One. And the next one. Negative three. Negative three halves. You got it. Okay. Now, what do we want to happen next? The two to become a zero, don't you? How will we make that happen? Well, um, negative two times row one plus row two. And I think it's Evan that got me onto this of doing it, saying it the other way. Row two, three. <laughs> Excuse me. Poor people at home didn't know that was coming, did they? Okay. Minus two row one. Okay. Will be the new row three. And what will that give you? Goodness gracious. Next. Zero. Good. Negative one. Next. Zero. Yes. Okay. Next. Yuck. This is such a pain in the neck. Okay. 
Where was I? Here. I can almost see that one. Eh? One minus zero. One. Yeah. Next one. Zero. And the last one. Did someone say something? Negative one. You got it. All right. I like the way the third row is shaping up. Okay. All right. What do we have well, to happen next? Positive one six, the next one a, a zero, and then a minus one third, and then the next one would be a well, positive one half. Ugh. More fractions. Anyone see an easier way? Yes, let's switch runs again. And just negate the bottom row and make it the middle row. Okay? That will work on it. Okay? So I'm going to do two and one if it's okay again. I'll do uh, minus row three becomes row two, and row two becomes row three. Okay? So let's come down here and do it next. We're not messing with one yet, so that's going to be a one, two, one half, zero, zero, one. And our new row two will be what? Zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one. Got it. Okay, I guess I'll write down the next one. 0, negative 3, negative 1 half, 0, 1, and negative 3 halves. I hope I caught those signs correctly. I keep leaving off that 1 half, don't I? There must be something psychological there. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Okay. What do we want to happen next? A zero above the one in the second row and a zero below the one in the second row. Let's do the above first. How will we make that happen? How will we make that happen? By a known quantity, what would it be? Negative two. So let's do row one minus two, row two. If it was ever right, there it goes. So let's see where that goes. Now we're using row two, so write it down zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, one. I said I like the way that looks, so that's what we're using. Okay. Now, what's your new row one? New row one is? First entry is? One. Very good. Second entry is? Zero. Third entry is second one half exactly one half. Okay. Sorry. Fourth entry is two. 
positive 2. Perfect. Next. 0. Next. Negative three halves, perfect. Three halves, negative three halves. Everybody see it? Okay, what do we want to happen next? How will we make that happen? Using row two, yeah, yeah. So, row two times three. Right, plus row three. Okay, so this will be row three plus three row two. Or the way you said it, either one, they both do the same thing. So what will, what, huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, but yeah, there that means the same thing. Three row two plus row three or row three plus three row two. Same thing. Next. What's the first entry? Zero. Okay. Next entry. Zero. Next entry. Ah This is such an aggravating thing. Okay. Next entry. Negative one half. Okay, next entry. I don't think so. It's three times row two. What would that be? Negative three. You see it? Okay, next. One. One. Next. Second. You may have said it right, I just couldn't hear. Okay. Row 3, which is negative 3 halves, plus 3 times row 1, which is 3. Well, how many halves is 3? How many halves is 3? Okay, if you have 3 pieces here, I think in terms of food, you cut them each one in half. How many half pieces do you have? 6. 6, okay, yeah, you like food too, right? Okay, <laughs> okay, 6. So that would be six halves, right? Minus three halves plus six halves. That would be one and a half and three halves, right? Right. Okay, so three halves. Okay. Now, what do we want to happen next? Before we do that, what would be the next step? What would be the next thing you'd want to happen? After you get that to be a one, what's the next thing you want to happen? That to be a zero. Well, let's take a look here. If you just added these two together, before you multiply by negative two, that becomes a zero already. So I think that might be 
maybe a slight bit easier to do. So normally we don't do this, but let's do it in this case. Add row 3 to row 1. Okay? Yuck. All right. So that new matrix will be, we're going just, we're not messing with row 2, so it's 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Okay? Now, what's the new row 1? If you add row 1 to row 3. 1, 0, second, eh? Zero. zero, that's a minus down there, sorry, I told you that was slow. And what's next? Negative 1, 1, 0. That wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, now let's do what you said before. Uh, negative 2 times row 3. It's going to be the new row 3. Okay? So let's double double and change signs for row 3. What do you have then? Zero. 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 One. One. Help me. Six. It's a negative two. Negative two times row three. Negative two, right? Okay. And say again. Negative three. Perfect. 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 Ho ho ho! What do we have? It's not Christmas yet, but I said, that's that better. What do we have? The identity matrix. So what would make this? If this is I, what does this become? The inverse of A. Right? Because if you start with this, multiply, yeah, and, and row reduce it with the identity matrix, and you wind up with the identity matrix instead of here, that ends up with the inverse matrix here. So we have found, you might call it A inverse. Okay. That was a fair amount of work. I mean, it was easy work, but it was just a lot of it. A little bit tedious. But what do we do with that? We take that inverse matrix, uh, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and 6 minus 2, negative 3, and you multiply it by what? That theorem up above? Multiply on the left by your solution vector. Negative 1, 1, negative 2. Okay? And what does that give you? It should give you your variable vector, x, y, z. Let's see if it does. Now, if you multiply this by that, what does that give you? Can you multiply it? Let's answer that first. This is what size? And this is a? And what answer will you get? 3 by 1, exactly. Okay, so then we'll wind up with a 3 by 1, which will be a blank, blank, blank. Hey, that fits X, Y, Z, doesn't it? It's as easy as A, B, C. No, no, no. Okay? And how would you get this entry? Is it 1, 1 entry? Row 1 times. Power 1. Two. So that gives you two, right? Next, the two one entry would be zero, negative 
2, that gives you 1 minus 2 is? Negative 1. Okay? So it'll be a negative 1. And then the next one will be a 3-1 entry. That would be row 3, box, column 1, which would be negative 6 minus 2 plus 6. So plus 6 minus 6 is here, so that should be the minus 2. Okay? We got 2, negative 1, negative 2. Yay, they got it too. That's the solution matrix for that. Now, I want your honest opinion. Wouldn't it have been much shorter to just augment this with this? Do your same row reduction, reduction. You only have one column to row reduce now, not three. So it seems like that would be shorter, wouldn't it? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. But not really. Here's why. What's the B part of the problem? Okay. I'm going to, and this seems like ridiculous to do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way. Okay. Well, uh, this really seems ridiculous because the pen sews terribly slow. This really seems ridiculous, but there's a method to the madness here, folks. I sure hope so anyway. I promise you one of these days I'll be through. I'll be finished maybe, I don't know. All right. I'm going to leave the result from one here. Okay. Here is the B part. Sorry that took so long. 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 4 3x plus 3y plus z is equal to 8 and 2x plus 4y plus z is equal to 5. Okay? Now how do we proceed? How will you proceed? What are you trying to do? You're trying to solve that system of equation now. We just solved this one and there was a solution x equal 2, y is equal to negative 1, z is equal to negative 2. That's the unique solution for that first. Now we're doing another one. So what will we do? Second. Put up the coefficient matrix, is that what you said? Except what you notice about it. Isn't that identically the same coefficients as you have here? So guess what? There's no reason to do it. You already have the adjunct for that, the inverse for that, right? So all you do is take this matrix here and do the inverse, okay? That is minus 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and 6 minus 2 minus 3, and multiply it by what? 4. 8, 5.
for some reason my pen is getting oh that's what the reason is it's all tangled up okay and I think we can do that one pretty quickly, right? Is that also going to be a three by one? One, two, three. So all we have to do here is a matrix multiplication. What would you get? Four. Perfect. X equal four. One. Ooh, big numbers. Negative seven. That's what I got too, okay? Negative seven. Hey, guess what? We just solved that. Now, was that faster or slower than using Gauss Jordan? Much faster. Okay. Well, let's do the C one now. The C one is 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to zero. Uh, 3x plus 3y plus z is equal to zero and 2x plus 4y plus z is equal to zero okay um do a coefficient matrix is that where we had No, it's the same set of coefficients, isn't it? You just got different equal at the end. So what do we do? Take our inverse matrix and multiply it by what? Yes, and what do you think we might get? Three zeros. That's it. Exactly. I can write the answer to that one down. The answer is zero. Zero, zero. X one equals zero. X two equals zero. I mean, x equals zero. Y equals zero. Z equals zero. How do I know that? Because this matrix is invertible, right? If it's invertible, it has one and only one unique solution. And since any matrix that ends in zero, that's going to be a solution. But you may have others. Not if this is invertible. That would be the only solution. You found it. So, what's the bottom line here? Yeah, finding the inverse matrix is longer than doing Gauss or Gauss Jordan elimination. It is, okay? But if you're going to have the same coefficient matrix and just changing your output vector, and you're going to do it at, even twice much easier to do it this way. So even though the, the finding the inverse is longer than doing Gauss or Gauss-Jordan, uh, if you don't have to do the Gauss or Gauss-Jordan, I mean, if you don't have to do the inverse but once and use that same inverse matrix over and over again, it's really easy to do that multiplication. So I would say if you got two or more uh, same systems, only different outputs, now, is that realistic? Would you ever have that? Well, let's say this represented a industrial business production of some nature, okay? And say those equations represent three devices you have to, uh, to manufacture whatever you need to manufacture or, or something. Anyway, you, you can imagine. You're not going to change the internal thing, but you might change your input, okay? And therefore, what would, what would you need to change to get this? If, if, your, if your system is all set up, 
the number of people are the same, the machines are the same, the speeds are the same, everything's the same, which is all represented in the coefficient matrix, and you just are investigating, well, what would be the best way to go? Should we shoot for this? Should we shoot for this? And you want to compare your output, uh, then I think this would be the way to go. Do inverse once, and then do your matrix multiplication every time I do that. Now, of course, in business, I doubt if any of us are shooting for this, are we? Right. Probably not. Unless, of course, you framed your problem in uh, what will give me my minimum input. In other words, you're subtracting things, so you're trying to get it to zero. That may be the thing you're looking for. So who knows? You might want that. But that doesn't really tell you much because just shut it down and it's not going to give you anything. So no, I don't think we ever want to go that route. Okay. I think we got the same answer as they did, didn't we? Yes, okay. Homework exercises, and I'll remind you again, odd numbers are in the back of the book, the answers are in the back, but also the odd numbers are, uh, calcchat.com has worked out solutions for the odd number exercises. So if you do them and can't get the answer in the back, can't figure out how to get the answer in the book back, Go to calpchat.com and see how they did it. And then hopefully that will help you get it right. So do any of the odds 1 through 5. Do any of the odds 7 through 29. Okay? Now those last two, they say you might need computer help, and they will be tedious, but you see what you can do. 29 especially looks a lot easier than the 27, but I, I can't swear that it is. Then do any of the odds, uh, 31 to 35, we did some of those before. Uh, do either 37 or 39 or both, and we did one like that before. Uh, then do any of the odds, 41, either 41 or 43 or both. Uh, then do either 45 or 47 or both. And then do any of the, well, either 49 or 51 or both. Those are getting pretty hefty bright problems there. But I think we did some that were almost that long. And they're pretty low numbers, so I think you can do those. And then uh, do number 53. Okay. Do number 55. And do number 57. Do number 59, and sixty-one. Now, sixty-one, eyes are stinging. And this happened yesterday, too, and I, I don't know what's going on here. That I'm beginning to suspect there's something in the building that's doing this to me. Yesterday morning was fine, no problem. And after my second class, this eye was so red, I could hardly, it didn't really hurt much, but when I looked at myself in the mirror, I said, what's going on here? So the rest of the day, it stayed pretty red. Went home last night, started clearing up overnight, nothing matted up, nothing, so I don't think it's an infection. But now today, it feels crazy. I don't know, is it red, or can you tell? Okay. So, I don't know. I think part of it is writing over this where the heat comes out, but I've been doing this for all terms for a long time, and but this week it started doing it. I don't know if they did something in our filtration system or something that is really irritating my eyes like crazy. But anyway, 59. Then number 61 is uh, talking about a matrix called a flexibility matrix which is basically talking about flexibility of an object, not a person. But And then there's a true-false, number 63. You could welcome to look at that. Then there's a few proofs, 65 through 71 are all proofs. Some of those are pretty short and fun. Some may be a little more involved. You decide whether you want to do those. Then there's a couple of things to write. I wouldn't say you necessarily have to write. I would definitely think through them. That would be 
73. Then getting back to actually doing problems, 75. Then another proof, 77. Another sort of like a problem, 79. Another writing, both 81 and or 83. You don't have to do those higher numbers if they look like they're way too wacko for you. Okay, any questions before we move on? All right, 2.4. What we're dealing with here are elementary matrices. Okay. Uh, now, I really don't feel like I need one, but this is a changing sections. Do y'all feel like you, does anyone feel like we could use a break? If you don't, we'll keep going. But if you do, this is a good place to have a break. You want one or not? No. No? Yes? Okay. Let's take a very short break. Uh, that'll give me time. All right. Section 2.4 is talking about um, the subject of elementary matrices. Okay? Does this mean as opposed to junior high or high school matrices? No, no, no. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, but almost that simple. Uh, two things we'll do. We'll factor a matrix into a product of elementary matrices, which gets to be a little, if, if you think some of the other things we've done has been tedious, this gets tedious too, okay? Matrices can be tedious. And then we'll find a special factorization called the LU factorization uh, that can maybe help us solve systems of the linear equations as well. Okay, <clears throat> so way back, we introduced three elementary row operations. Does anyone remember what they were? We've used all three of them today. <laughs> How is it we go about solving a matrix? That, that, the second. Yes, okay, that's one thing we do. You add a multiple of one row to another row. That's, that's the one we use the most. But what else can we use? Remember that last matrix that we had that was wound up having fractions? What's the first thing we did? Switch the rows. That's the first elementary row operation. It's not the first. It's the one that was. Another one we did. Since none of them had a leading one, we div divided. divided or multiplied, you know, one row by a number. So those are our three elementary rows. Exchange two rows. Uh, multiply or divide one row by a non-zero number. Okay. Don't ever multiply a row by zero, okay? You wipe out all meaning of the row. Don't ever divide a row by zero. You can't ever divide by zero, so don't do a zero for any other number you could. We multiply one by one half, or by negative two, remember? Or we divide it by a half. I mean, just anything you could do, okay? And then we, the ones we use a lot, add a multiple of one row to another row. Those are our three multiple, uh, three elementary row operations. So why bring those up again, since we've been using them like crazy? Well, here's the definition of an elementary matrix, okay? Now, first, it has to be an N by N. What does that tell you? Square. Has to be a square matrix, okay? So, it's going to be a square matrix, and it is an elementary matrix, okay, when it can be obtained okay, from an identity matrix I'm just going to put I sub N the identity matrix of that size, n by n, uh, by a single elementary row operation. 
E-R-O. Okay. Now, remembering the three elementary row operations, exchanging two rows, multiplying a row by a constant, or dividing a row by a constant, not zero, and adding a multiple of one row to another row. Okay? So what I'm going to show you in example one, they show you in the book, six different matrices. You tell me whether they're elementary uh, matrices or not. Okay? Here's matrix A. 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1. Is that an elementary matrix? Yes, you started with I, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? And did a single elementary operation to it, multiply the second row by 3. Yeah, that's an elementary matrix. How about this one? This is the B one. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Is that an elementary matrix? <clears throat> okay. Resist the urge. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> Why not? What's the first thing it says? It has to be square. It has to be square, and that's not square, that's rectangular. So, no, it can't be an elementary matrix. Okay? It's not square. Okay, here's C. It's yes in Spanish. Okay? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Is that an elementary matrix? No. Okay, he's not going to want anything this time. He's just going to say no. Okay, why not? You started with a I, but what did you multiply the third row by? Zero. Zero, you can't do that. You never multiply a row by zero. It's any non-zero number. So no, that's not an elementary matrix. Okay? Let's do D. D is this one. One, zero, zero. Zero's yuck. Zero, zero, one. And zero, one, zero. Is that an elementary matrix? Why? What do you do? You switch the bottom two rows. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's an elementary row operation. Exchange two rows, multiply by a constant. Okay, good deal. So that is an elementary matrix. How about this one? Goodness gracious, this thing drives me nuts. Okay. Is that an elementary matrix? What you think? Yes. What did he do? My my younger brother used to be a vice president of a small rural electric company, uh, and he would tell the story of this IT guy that they had. And he goes, "I don't mean to smear all IT people. We got great ones here, but this was one of the." maybe more typical uh, just you could hardly talk to the guy okay because he spoke IT you know he didn't think in terms of people or anything else and something would go down something would mess up they call him in Dan said the first thing he'd do when he walked in the room he said what you do <laughs> not what's wrong what did you do <laughs> it's in a really derogatory manner what you do and so, what do you do? What did you do here? Remember, you had to start with the I matrix. This would have been a two by two. I, one, zero, zero, one. What did you do? Okay. Here we multiply by a non-zero constant. 
There we exchange two rows. What other elements of our operation could we do? Divide by two, the bottom line. Okay, no, okay, you're going the other way. You took the first row, multiplied by two, and added to the second. Remember, that's one of our elementary row operations. Multi adding a multiple of one row to another row. If you added two times row one to the I matrix, that matrix right there, two times that plus that, you get this, right? Now that's not the I matrix, but that's why I covered the last one. So yeah, that is an elementary matrix. Okay, and how about this one? One, zero, 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 two, zero, and zero, zero, negative one. Is that an elementary matrix? Why not? Right. You did two elementary row operations. You multiplied the second row by two and the bottom row by negative one. No, it's only one. You can only allow the one elementary row operations. Both of those were elementary row operations, but you did two of them. So that wouldn't be the case. You're absolutely right. Okay, let's just check their answers. The first one was, yes, uh, multiplied the middle row by row three. Uh, the second one was not because it wasn't square. The third one was not because you had a row of zeros at the bottom, which you had to multiply by zero, and you can't multiply by zero. The next one was because you just exchanged two rows. The next one was because you multiplied a multiple of one row by another. And the last one was not because you did two elementary row operations. It can only be one, a single elementary row operation. All right, let's look at example two, okay? Now, what's the deal with these things either? Elementary matrices are useful because they enable you to use the matrix multiplication to perform elementary row operations. Well, then why don't you just do the elementary row operations, you might ask. Well, we'll get there, maybe, okay? Now, what we're going to do is take an elementary matrix, or you tell me if it is one. Oops, <laughs> no it's not, okay. It was supposed to be, but I miswrote it. Okay. Is that an elementary matrix? Yay or nay? Yes, it is. You just exchange the top two rows. Okay, we're going to multiply that by a matrix. This is an E matrix. Okay. That's what we're going to call elementary matrix now, capital E's. Any one of them would be a capital E. If we have more than one, we'll go E1, E2, E3, E4. Okay, but they're going to be E's. Here's a general matrix, A. And this happens to be 0, 2, 1, 1, negative 3, 6, and 3, 2, negative 1. Okay, now what we're going to do here is multiply the E matrix by the A matrix. Can we multiply that? You tell me. Yes? Three by three to three by three, and your answer is going to be, like you said, a three by three. Okay. Okay, here we go. Want to do the one, one entry? All right. Can you do it? First row by first column. Zero. Zero. One. All right. Zero. And so that gives you a one. 
Why? Okay. One, two entry would be first row to second column. That would be a second. Two. I can't hear. Two. Two. Okay. Uh, let me make sure we're doing the right one. Are we doing one, two, or two, one? Okay. Yeah. You were doing this one. Okay, well, I mean, we could do it. Just which one will we do? No, let's just keep it in order. Okay. There's no special order. It's just how I started. You don't think you have to do it that way. You don't have to. Okay? I think I told you I had one suit at one time. Whatever I would do, he would do it the opposite way. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he was just being obstinate or if he just thought this was me. I don't know why. It doesn't it matter. So if we're going to do one, two, what would that be? Zero. Zero. Be a negative, negative three. three. Got it. Okay. Next. Zero. zero. Is it total zero? Or that's just the first one? Okay. Zero. Yeah, go ahead. Six. Zero. That'll be a six. Okay. Two, one. Really? How'd you get that? I'm positive. Okay, how did you get that? Okay, you're doing the two, one entry, right? Two by one. Zero. Zero, zero, zero. Zero. Okay. Right? Next. That's going to be a two. Next. How'd you get that one? Are you doing the two three? Yeah. Two three. So second row, third column. Oh, yeah. One. One. Just yeah. one. Just one. Just one. Okay. All right. Three one. Three. Zero, 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 zero. Three. Two. Two. Negative one. Negative one. All right. How does your answer matrix? Compare it to your original A. Just yeah, you just switched the first two rows, which is exactly what you had done to this elementary matrix. So, what an elementary matrix does for you, since it represents one and only one elementary row operation, multiplying that does the same elementary row operation there. Right? Now, tell me which is easier. To flip those two rows or to do the multiplication? Easy answer. Flip the rows. Why have to do multiplication to just flip those two rows? I could have flipped the two rows, okay? But this is just showing you it will do it. But that elementary operation, that elementary matrix, the elementary row operation that accomplishes that matrix, when you multiply it, it does that same elementary row operation to your original matrix. Okay? So, let's get back to something. Remember I said Gauss-Jordan elimination isn't quite so easy to program into a computer? Well, guess what? Elementary row operations, elementary matrices are pretty easy to program in, and then have the computer do the multiplication. You don't have to do it, have that do it. And it gives you the answer pretty quickly. Okay? So, I don't know. Now, let's do another one. This time, we'll have a matrix that's 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, half, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 
Question, is that an elementary matrix? What you think? Yeah, you can multiply by a constant. That's exactly what they did. The middle row of the identity matrix, you multiply by one half. One single operation, you did it. That is an elementary matrix. Okay, what if we multiply this by an A here, which is 1, 0, negative 4, 1, uh, 0, 2, 6, minus 4, 0, 1, 3, 1. Okay. Wait a minute. Can your A be a rectangular matrix? A can. E can. E has to be square. But you can multiply by anything that works. Will this work? 3 by 3 by... Yes, it'll work. 3 by 4, that'll work. What will be the size of the answer? 3 by 4. Okay, so let's go to it. That's exactly what we're going to do. Okay? That's That was the point here. Okay? And let's just do it really quickly and see. Multiplying this by these, that would be a 1, a 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 4, 0, 0, 0, that's negative 4, 1, 0, 0. That's just going to reproduce that first row. Okay? Just like this one reproduced that row. The elementary matrix row, I mean the things that are correct in that, just reproduces that row. Okay? And what happens here is 0, 0, 0, so that stays a 0. And then the next one is 0, 1, 0, that would be a 1, which is multiplying that by dividing that by 2. Next would be a 0. 3, 0, that's a 3, dividing that by, yeah, you multiply it by 1 half, all the others are zeros, you just multiply each of these by 1 half, that would be a negative 2. That's exactly what this does. Whereas this third one, 0, 0, 0, 0, I mean that's a 0, 0, 0, 1, that's a 1, negative 4, I mean 0, 0, 3, that's a 3, and 0, 0, 1, that's a 1. It just reproduces that row. So you're right. The top row stays the same because you multiply by 1, 0, 0. The bottom row stays the same because you multiply by 0, 0, 1. The middle row, all you did was that middle value, the one that's going to hit on that middle row every time, take a half of it. And you got 0, 1, 3, negative 2. You see? So the elementary matrix does to the matrix A exactly the same operation that you did to the elementary matrix, multiplying the middle row by one half. So you're absolutely right. That would be it. Okay, you want to try to squeeze in one more down here? I'm going to start with a clean cause. When I get near the bottom and it starts hitting these little symbols down here, it does all sorts of weird things. So I'm going to clear this if it's okay. Is it all right? Okay, thanks. Here's a matrix. One zero zero. That's starting good. Two one zero. Oops, that looks strange. And zero zero one. That looks all right. Is that an elementary matrix? You tell me. What you think? 
Think so. Why? What did it do? Think your identity matrix. That's where you start. Okay? And what did you do to that to get this one? Did it add 1 plus 2? Draw 1 plus 1? Raise both 2? Okay. What you did, you multiplied the top row, 1, 0, 0, times 2, made it 2, 0, 0, added to the second row, which is 0, 1, 0, that gave you a 2, 1, 0. You Added a multiple of one row to another row. Yeah, that's all you did, right? So what we do most often with elementary row operations, right? Start, think first the elementary, I mean the, the identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Do a single row operation to that. Multiply the top row by 2, add it to the second. Yep, that's what you get. You see? Okay. Now, so this is an elementary matrix. One single elementary row operation. Here's another matrix. One, zero, minus one. Negative two, negative two, three. And zero, four, five. Okay. Now, that's some other matrix A. Definitely not an elementary row an elementary matrix. Okay? Wow. Can we multiply those two? Goodness gracious, this gets so tangled. The answer is yes, what size? Three by three. Okay? And let's start doing it. One, zero, zero, negative one. Perfect. Next. Zero. Okay. Negative two. Yep, looks like a negative two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Second. One. One. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got lost there. Minus two. Yeah. One. Got it. Next. Zero. 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 Oh, I don't think so, is it? The two, three entry, huh? Four. four. I'm sorry, the three, two entry. That would be a four, and this would be a five. Okay. Now, this is maybe not quite so easy to see what you did. But, if you had taken this row plus twice this one, what would that give you? Same thing we did here. Twice this plus that. Two times one. Two. Minus two is? Zero. Two times zero plus negative two is? Negative two. Two times minus one. Minus two plus three is one. Yep. This elementary row operation you did to get this is what you did here to get that. The other two rows stayed the same. Just like we used to do. I mean, that's what we would have done. So we get that to be a zero, we multiply this by two and add it to that. Which is exactly what we did here. And by multiplying these two, that's exactly what we did there. So these elementary matrices do the same elementary row oper operation to the matrix A that was done to the elementary 
matrix to make it the elementary matrix. Okay. That was the third one, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, each of those three products we just did, two on the previous slide, one on this one, you're able to perform elementary row operations by multiplying on the left by an elementary matrix. The next theorem, stated without proof, generalizes this property of elementary matrices. Okay, and since I'm not sure everybody has a book yet, let me write this down. Let E be an elementary matrix. Okay. Performed by, obtained by performing an elementary row operation, just one, an ERO, okay, elementary row operation, on some I of the proper size. We'll call it I sub M now. I don't know why they changed from M. Now, <clears throat> that's your elementary matrix. If that same elementary row operation, ERO, <clears throat> is performed on an M by N matrix, Uh, they made it an M by N. Some matrix A. Okay. Then the resulting matrix is given by the product EA. Okay, and that's what we've just shown. An elementary row operation is obtained by doing a single ERO, elementary row operation, like this one, multiplying 2 by the first row adding to the second. On some identity matrix IM, that was I 3 by 3 here, I sub 3. If that same elementary row operation, multiplying by 2, adding to the second row, top row by 2, adding to the second row, uh, is performed on an M by N, this happens to be 3 by 3 also, matrix A, then the result is the same uh, as multiplying this with E by A. Yeah, you've just seen that. Now, they always said multiply on the left. I thought they were going to get around to saying what happens on the right, but they didn't, okay? Not yet. Uh, now, already we've seen to make one elementary row operation, if you're multiplying by elementary matrices, that's bigger, okay, it's longer. You, uh, it takes more time to do than just to flip two rows or multiply, yeah. Elementary row operations are fairly simple, okay? So this is longer. But what if you're going to do a bunch of these, like trying to get into Gauss-Jordan form or something like that? My word, every one, you've got to pick another elementary matrix and multiply it again and again and again. That gets quite a bit longer, okay? And that's what they say at the bottom. This translates into multiplication on the left by several elementary matrices, and the order of multiplication is important. The elementary matrix immediately to the left of A corresponds to the elementary row operation performed first. And that's what example three is going to show. Let's see if we can do it in a relatively short time. I doubt it, but let's try. Okay. What we have is a matrix A. And it's sort of a big matrix. 0, 1, 3, 5. 1, negative 3, 0, 2. 2, negative 6, 2, 0. Okay. That's some matrix A. 
doesn't have to be square. Any old matrix A. Rectangular matrix. Okay. If you were trying, trying to get this into uh, row echelon form, what would be your first step? Exactly. So, that's to switch row one and row two, and that would make it what? One. And the last row stays the same. Now, if it were me, I would be going on dividing that last one by two, but we're doing one step at a time here, not not skipping any steps. Okay? Now, what would be the elementary matrix that did that same thing? And what size matrix does this elementary matrix need to be? Number one, what shape does the elementary matrix need to be? Square. Square. Okay. So what dimensions must it have? Three by three, perfect. This has to be a three by three matrix. Oops, I messed up. Okay, because you always multiply from the left. And since it has, has three rows, that has to have three columns, and if it has to be square, it has to have three rows. So yeah, they put them in the book backwards, but you know it has to be a three by three. Now, what elementary matrix? would have done the same thing when you multiply it by 8. Okay, always imagine you're starting from the I matrix. Identity matrix. 3 by 3 identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? What elementary matrix from that one would have done the same thing that you did with A right there? Did 2A right there. What did you do? What did you do? You switched, you switched two rows. So guess what elementary matrix that would have been? Zero. One zero. One zero zero. Zero zero one. You didn't do anything to the third row, did you? It stayed the same. You flipped the first two. So the elementary matrix that did that is to start with the identity matrix, flip the first two rows. You see? That's the identity elementary matrix that did that when you multiply by that, we're giving you this. Okay? Now, what's the next thing you're going to do to this? You're going to do what? You want a one to lead on row three? Uh, not yet. You want a, I mean a zero. zero to lead on row three. Right. Okay. And how will you get that? Negative one. Negative two times row one and add the row three. So that's what we'll say. Oh, this was row one and row two switched. Okay. Here is. Uh, row 3 minus 2 row 1. Okay? So that we're dealing with uh, using row 1, so leave it alone. My 1, 3, 0, 2. And we're not using 2, so leave it alone. And we are, what's our new row 3 then? New row three. New row three. Do that. Zero. Is 
Second. Zero. And? Negative two. And? I think it's negative four, isn't it? Is that right? I'm a little wacko right now. Okay, what elementary matrix would have done that same thing that you just did to this? If you multiply it with that, what would it have been? Okay. Where? Okay, where are you talking about? Here? Okay. It's row three minus two row one. So that's state of negative two. Is that what you meant? Okay. And then the last was row three minus two times that. So it's negative two. Okay. Now what elementary matrix would have done the same thing to this to get that? Where, where do you always pick your beginning? No, identity matrix. Identity matrix, which is equivalent to a one. Okay? And then you're going to do the same operation to that identity matrix. Now, remember what the first thing we did here? We didn't do anything to row one or row two. So, on our identity matrix, don't change a thing to row one or two. So they stay which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Only thing we're changing is row 3, so the only thing we change to the identity matrix is row 3. And what do we change? Row 3, which was a 0, minus 2 times row 1, which was a Yeah, it wrote one of the identity matrix. Zero. Negative two times one. Add to the zero, you get negative two. And then everything else, nothing changes. Negative uh, row three was a zero. Again, picture the identity matrix. Zero down there minus uh, two times zero. That stays zero. And a 1 down here, uh, minus 2 times 0, is still 1. So that's all you did. So that's the identity matrix that did the same thing going from here to here. You did it to the, you did it to an identity matrix. Okay? Right? I think we're out of time. Sorry about that. Am I right? Yes. I think so. Okay, you go home, not now, but whenever you do, and you finish up the next two steps. One is reducing this, and the next is coming up with the elementary matrix that does the same thing, okay? And we'll pick up from there next time, okay? All right. Let's see, are there any homework exercises in this set? I think probably so, but let's see. I know so. Ooh, this is sort of a long section. I know you can do any of the odds one through seven. Okay? I think you can do either nine or eleven. And I think you can start doing either 13 or 15. Stop there and we'll do the rest of those later. Okay? Good deal. Okay. So now y'all do know about the good news, bad news situation next week, right? Did I tell you? Huh? I know you do. Yeah. You know what it is? Okay. The 
Bad news is it's a holiday next week. Wednesday is 4th of July. There's no school. The college will be closed. But the good news is it doesn't affect us any because we meet Tuesday, Thursday. So we meet regular. All right. Good deal. That keeps us happy, right? All right. Good deal. And by the way, work on your papers, folks. I don't think uh, one person has turned in a paper and did a good job, too. All of you have done your first test except one person who's not here. Okay. Thanks for doing that. Did you grade those tests already? Yeah. I wrote, and you did, uh, made it 88. Did you want to see what you got? Okay. Okay. I can't return it to you because not everybody's turned it in. There's at least one person who hasn't turned it in. So when you finish looking at it, get it back to me. But I got to run downstairs and swap out books. I've got some.